of season two of Living Well. I'm so excited about the guests we have on today, but first I want to tell you that we are focusing on songwriters for the next few weeks of Living Well, just because that I believe that writing songs is such an incredible gift. It's such an incredible gift that when you can tap into your own creativity, you learn how to process your emotions at a level that I don't think anything else can help you do in life other than art. I taught a 90 minute songwriting workshop a few weeks ago with Adam Roa and it was incredible. So many of you came to it. It was so inspiring to me. We laughed, we cried on it and seeing you guys learn how to write was one of the coolest things. And because it went so well, a lot of you requested that we do another one and we go a little bit deeper. So we have decided to do a four week songwriting course. It starts November 16th. And we are going to be going in depth about, you know, different, different parts of the writing process and really just practicing to learn how to write together. I will be writing, Adam will be writing, we'll all be writing songs. You will come out of this course with fully finished songs that I'm so excited for you to have. I'm so excited for you to be a part of our little intimate community that we're going to be making. So if you're interested in joining us for this four week songwriting course, Click on the link below in the description and you can fill out the application. We're only accepting a smaller number of people because we really want the, the group to be intimate and we, we want to get to know each other and it's just going to be a really special few weeks. So click on that link. But let's get to our guest for today. Grammy nominated songwriter, born in Tennessee. She's the daughter of country singer songwriter, Dean Dillon, has written incredible songs you will know, like 10,000 Hours, Rich, To Hell and Back. She's a dear friend of mine, wrote a lot with me on Heart Theory. Please welcome our guest for today, Jesse Jo Dillon. Jesse Jo Dillon, hi! Friends, what is happening? So good to see you virtually. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. I, it's just, what a, what a year. What a year, 2020. Um, it feels like yesterday we were, we wrote the night before going into the studio for our last session on Heart Theory. Jesse was like one of the masterminds with us. Like we, we finished the song finally at like one in the morning. It was I know. down to the wire. It was, and it's such a jam. Like, yeah. it's one of those great examples to me of just like, go do it, go see what happens. You know what I mean? Do it. You know. As a songwriter, you just never know. And I've always looked up to you, just, I mean, you're one of my dear friends in life, so I'm biased, but you're just so good at in a room as a songwriter. We're focusing on songwriters, by the way, this month of Living Well, and you're yeah. so good at, at, channeling like exactly what you want to say and putting it into words and as a writer that's such a difficult thing to do sometimes but you're just so like eloquently beautiful at it you're making me blush thank <laughs> you so much I um well it, it makes it easy when I get to write with someone like you I mean because I feel the exact same way about you and you as a singer writer and guitar player is always and female super inspiring to be around and like as a songwriter that's kind of my favorite part especially when you get to work with artists is trying to like figure out how to tell their story in their words with like fusing some of your stuff too it's just an you know it's such an totally. interesting totally. cool personal vulnerable process that yeah. we have so i want to go way back you were born in nashville then oh, you yeah. went out to LA and then you yeah. came back to Nashville, like opposite of what other artists do sometimes. What was it like in LA and what made you want to come back? So I basically, I moved to LA because I'm from here. And so I just felt like I needed that, like, okay, I need to get out of my hometown and grow up. I also, um, for those of you who don't know, my dad is a hall of fame songwriter. And so I always oh, felt, wow. He's the man. I'm about to see the him. Man. I know. Um, but he, I always felt very, as proud of him as I was, I was very like intimidated by him. Mm -hmm. So 
I kind of was trying to find within myself, like, come on, man, want to do anything else. Like, please, just not music. So I went to L.A., and I met this woman out there that worked at Sony that I would play songs for, and she was finally the person that was like, you need to go home, and you because you can do this. I don't, she was kind of like, I don't really care who your dad is because she was in the LA world. So, you know, it meant, didn't mean as much to her. Um, she said, but like you are a country songwriter. And so the rest is history. I moved back and tried to get a publishing deal and eventually did. And yep. It's amazing. So it must have been a huge thing, like watching your dad growing up, like being in the industry as a little girl. Did you learn watching him? do his thing at all growing up? You know, listening to all the songs and there were definitely, sometimes I think people think like I was around all these huge artists and stuff all the time. And I really wasn't. I mean, there were times, but my parents got divorced when I was six. So I lived with my mom, but there were always songwriters around. And my mom worked, she was an A&R at Warner Brothers before she had us kids. So I guess really it's, Because I don't know if you were like this, but I do meet some artists and writers who will say, I didn't even know you could be a songwriter until I was like 18 or 19. Now, that was something that I was, I guess, by accident of birth was ahead of the curve on because I knew like you could do that for a living. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I did feel like I saw some things, but not, I was almost too young to really like get it if that makes sense totally yeah that totally makes sense did you ever consider being an artist no I'm so I mean you know you know I know I know I had that not shy because we're good friends but I I can be painfully shy when I don't know people and I don't know how y'all do it I have such stage fright the times I have forced myself to like perform at something though I see the high that you guys kind of, it almost is like a kid, you're like, I want to do it again. <laughs> but I would take too much. And I feel a bit of a chameleon as a writer. So it would be very interesting to like, kind of have to pick something as an identity, which I know you and every artist knows. It's like, you don't want to be put in a box, but there has to be something that people can like hold on to. Yeah, you have to be able to market something. You can't totally. Just yes. Yeah. So okay, no. I'm scared of it. <laughs> yeah. No, I I get it, which is so funny to me because you, when I think of you, scared is the last word that comes to my brain. You're just so powerful and confident and it's empowering, so and I'm just like, okay, I I love that vulnerability in you. Now we're gonna get into a few of the specifics in a, a minute, but I want to know what is your favorite song you ever wrote oh gosh um something you're really proud of you know one that I will always be very proud of that luckily has had success is break up in the end I just it feels like one of those songs that all three of our hearts were in that song and it's a ballad and so I mean honestly when we got done with it I literally remember saying I mean I don't know if anybody's going to care about this song, but I do. And so the fact that it found a home on top of that just feels like crazy. I mean, I feel so, it's one I'm really proud of and I hope, you know, sticks around. Like people will, it'd be cool like 10 years from now if somebody's like, "Mm, that song, I don't know if that'll happen, but I just love it so much. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Now, I remember we were actually writing with our buddy, Matt McGinn, pretty early Maddie. into, Maddie, um, I know. pretty early into 10,000 hours uh, life, let's just say. But yes. what is it like to write a song that massive? Did you know what it was going to be when you guys finished it that day? Absolutely not. I mean, absolutely not. I, to be honest, it was the first time I've re- I've written with Shay several times, and we were friends, but I had never written with Dan, and so or them to obviously them together, and so I loved the song, and I thought it was super awesome, but I didn't want to get my hopes up, so I just left the right mostly thinking man I'm glad that went very well. Like I feel like we vibed off each other, so like hopefully we can ride again. 
And then it's kind of a cool story. We were in New York, me and some big machine people. I don't even really remember what for. And Dan texted me. This was like four months probably after we wrote the song. And he was like, dude, I just saw you were in New York. So are we. I've got to meet up and see you. I want to play you something. And I was like, oh my gosh, they record that song. So anyway, we meet up. Dan takes us to like their hotel room where they were staying, that, or his room, him and Shay do not stay. Same room. That'd be you never, you never know. That'd be freaking hysterical. But at this point, um, yeah. I'm like imagining that, and them probably wanting to kill each other at some point. <laughs> but um, so we get in there, and Dan, before he like puts the headphones on my head, he's like, "Hey, guess what? Justin Bieber's singing on this." And I was like, "That's how he told you, yes, girl." And I was like, "Shut up, dude! No, he's not." And he was like, "Yes, he is." I was like, "No, he's not." And then he just dropped him on, and then. When Bieber's voice came in in the second, I was already emotional having a Dan and Shay record. But then when Bieber's voice came on, I was just like, whoa. I think Dan has it on video because he was like filming everybody. Yeah. It was such a special, I'll remember that forever, you know? Yeah, it's I had no idea that's the way you found out. That's so yes. cool. Totally. And so he, it was the coolest thing that they did. And I thought so thoughtful and, and, um, and how it feels, I mean, like, it's crazy. The song is so, has been, had such success, it almost feels surreal. Like, I, even still, like, I'm like, oh, 10,000 hours, someone else wrote that. I don't know, I feel like, <laughs> it's just so weird. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, no, I get it. I mean, week one, it debuted it at four, right? Something probably insane. I don't even know. I mean, I know it broke a streaming record for like the first week it was out or something and, and it just keeps to like going i think yeah. it's triple platinum now which is insane oh, i've never had anything do that and you're just Bro, like oh, well it has been a long time in the making you completely deserve it so i have to ask did you buy something to celebrate you know i kind of well I bought a house. I mean, a lot of songwriters, yeah, like buy a house. Yeah, I like, did buy, I bought a townhouse and, really? and um, so that was kind of, kind of my big, I That's felt crazy. like okay enough after that song because I can freak out about money just like everybody else. Like I felt comfortable enough to buy my first For home. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and especially a lot of songwriters moving to Nashville. I mean, we're so used to living off these little publishing draws, which people don't know what a publishing draw is. It's like, a little amount of money a month so you can pay your groceries and rent and then it's pretty much over. And totally. so as songwriters, we moved to town and we're used to living off these like little publishing drafts. So when you actually have a hit, it's like, I can buy a house. I know. <laughs> it is a complete change. Like yeah. I always, I mean, when you hear about songwriters getting audited and stuff, you're like, well, no wonder it's like one year you're making like 25 grand and the next year you're, somebody makes like six figures and yeah. So it's just, it's such a wild, wild thing in that way. Like our business is so, I mean, unless you're like Ashley Gorley, but. <laughs> yeah, true enough. But even if you're not be you, Ashley. Can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ashley, we, we all can't be you. I know. So the first time I heard Rich, I fell in love with it. I was like, this is such a jam. Yeah, thank this, you. This, it, it's honestly, I love that record so much, and I've listened to it over and over and over again. But Rich is probably my favorite song on the record. Dude, you know, if I wonder if it's our usual thing we'll say that John Mayer is really good at is that it's kind of a sad song. I mean, yeah. when you really look at it, it's somebody that's just throwing their heart against a wall mm -hmm. for a person that never really shows up for them. Yeah. But the music is so fun that it kind of like tricks you about how to feel in the moment. Cause you're kind of flossing, but it's this like sad flossing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, it is one of my favorite songs and I just can only imagine how much fun that was writing that. Oh, it was super fun. Cause it's like, you know, the days with two when it gets to be like three of us girls and guitars and just writing, it, that's so fun anyway too. We wrote it pretty fast because we were just kind of in it and having fun with it like every time someone would say a ridiculous line we'd be like let's do it that's you know great. like the big ass pile of dimes and all that yeah. stuff it was like why not yeah. you know this is the song for it that's amazing yeah. 
obviously our world has been rocked this year. Everybody's worlds have been rocked. Do you like writing on Zoom? Are you writing in person? Are you still trying to figure out the world as we all are? <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, I, Zoom, I don't hate. I like, I like it better when it's an option, yeah. I guess, rather I, than, because at first that's all any of us were doing. I have started doing some in person, but it's really safe. Like it's outside or like yeah, really yeah. distanced. And you know, you always check with everybody before, like, okay, nobody's feeling bad or something. And I've had a couple people when it was supposed to be in, in person in like a dope way, be like, Hey man, I'm actually kind of feeling weird. Should we just get on zoom? And, and of course you're like, yeah. Yeah. You know? So I feel like, I don't know, Nashville's such a cool community. I feel like we all care about each other and try to yeah. be accountable. So Golly, I mean, I'm hoping whenever we get a vaccine, gosh, whenever that's going to be. Yeah. I feel like that, I don't, I know you have felt like this with your own band and stuff, but man, friends that I have that are like session players or in a band or like are roadies, you're just like, oh. I mean, I just, I, they're itching to get back out there too. And it's just such a shitty situation for, wow. for everyone involved like I think sometimes people from the outside looking in will think about lots of businesses that everybody's almost like richer than they are if that yeah. makes sense yeah. and it's like no this has been really hard for like tons of people in entertainment I can't imagine Hollywood like that oh, they really? have not worked at all it right. doesn't seem like and so I'm just like how does that work for like the guys on set running cameras or whatever too. Yeah, all the crews, it's been a lot of our lives have been put on pause. Right, they really have. Yeah. And then the news is always so crazy. This has been an intense year. <laughs> an intense year, but you have been making the most of it. You just got back from one of you the most incredible trips that I have seen. Your pictures are insane. Dude, thank you. I feel like we went and did glamping at some like yeah. national parks, which felt safe because you're with all of us got a COVID test and then we were all on a bus together. And so we never really saw anyone else because you were just outside hiking or doing whatever. And so it's been creative to like come up with different things to do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I need to ask, so how many colors has your hair been? Oh, really? The blue is like fading. Right? I loved it. I thought it looked so good. I know. I'm sad that it's coming out. It has been, gosh, probably like five or six. I'll get bored and just do it. Because it'd be the same for you. Like it comes out right. so fast. I know. That I'm like, kind of thinking of doing it. Because I'm like, normally I couldn't. Could it exactly. All these things, but right now it's like, why not? I know. That was kind of my mood. I was just like, you know what? I don't have a ton of like press pictures or something like that and right. for y'all it's even more intense but it's just yeah. like better now than any time <laughs> you know? well JJ I love you so much and I cannot wait to actually get to hug you, you hopefully sometime very 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 soon thank you so much for coming on living well and sharing your heart and your brilliance and um can we hang out please yes I miss you so much Daisy misses you I miss Daisy. I know. Daisy, for all of you who don't know, has the cutest dog. She's just like the sweetest little, smallest dog. We her dog. The dog since she slept with Lindsay once, and it was beautiful. She it was, was in love. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah, I yeah. I, assumed, I, assumed. I know she. That's right. That was so cute. Because <laughs> she'll just get right up in your nook, you know. It's amazing. Thank you so much for having me on. I miss you. I miss you. I miss we'll you. definitely hang out soon. Yes. All right, girl. Mwah. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. All right, JJ. She is so sweet. I love that woman to death. Yeah, she wrote Ready to Love with me. She wrote The Other Side. The Other Side of Lonely. The Other Side of Sad. Anyway, yes, what a wonderful songwriter. Go check out her discography if you haven't heard some of those songs, but they're massive hit songs you probably have. All right, guys, now it's time to focus on some positive news. I always like highlighting some positive news stories just because I think there's so much going on in our world right now. There's so much going on in our world right now, and it's, it's just important to focus on the good things. So here is the first Wellism of the week. 
Edward Satan, a restaurant owner in Chicago, is using his extra time during the pandemic to help animals in need. Edward owns an old military style plane that he says costs less than most cars and he is using it to transport at risk animals to foster homes. He's working with a nonprofit called Pilots and Paws, which connects volunteer pilots to animals who have been abused, are in danger, or need saving from being euthanized. So far, Edward has flown over 40 pets to safety and says volunteer work has done a lot for his soul during this devastating time of layoffs and closures. Edward, thank you so much. That is so incredible. Your heart is so big. I love that story. Finding homes for foster animals, so, so cool. All right, Wellism number two. Gordon Wayne, a student at Boston College, is using his past experience of being homeless to help raise money for the National Alliance to End Homelessness. Before being accepted at Boston College, Wayne was homeless and was working at an amusement park while living out of his car. When he found out he was being accepted to his dream school on a full scholarship, he knew he wanted to help those dealing with the same problem as him. Wayne set out on a 500 mile walk from his hometown in Caroline County, Virginia, to his college in Boston, Massachusetts. He started a GoFundMe page to go along with his journey and has raised over $100,000 for the Alliance to date. After 16 days of intense walking, he is now back home at his college. Wayne said he hopes this will help inspire others to never give up, even when life gets hard. I totally see you, Gordon. That is so cool. Wellism number three. A fifth grader in Texas is striving to collect 100,000 meals to donate to those in need this holiday season. Orion Jean, a student at Chris Holm Ridge Elementary, is asking Dallas area residents to help donate packaged meals to his food drive. He's requesting meals contain one bottle of water, two tangerines or an apple, one cup of applesauce, and one granola bar. His only other request is that the food is packaged in a small brown paper bag labeled with a positive, uplifting message. Orion has already received almost 4,000 meals and just wants to help show love and support during this rough year to those in need. Orion, you are an incredible fifth grader? Fifth grade. I'm so impressed by you. All right, you guys, that was episode five of Living Well. I miss you guys. I am sending my love to you. I cannot wait to get back out on the road whenever we can do that sometime next year. But until then, we can just hang out and do Living Well episodes. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Oh, and also, before we leave, I'm teaching a songwriting course with Adam Roa. It is almost about to start. We start on November 16th. I'm so excited about it. Our 90 minute workshop that we did a few weeks ago was so incredible and so crazy that we decided to do a four week course. Actually, you guys requested that we do more and we were like, okay, what if we developed a course where we could actually practice writing and writing songs, which is why I'm focusing on songwriting this month for Living Well. So if you are interested in practicing and getting to write with me, getting to write with Adam, getting to learn about how we both write songs, click the link below. It'll get you to the splash page on my website where you can apply to be a part of our really cool, small, intimate community. And we're gonna be doing it for four weeks. I love you guys so much. <laughs>